Hi, and welcome to Studio Time with Zach. My name is Zachary Rudder. I'm an artist based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And on the easel this week, we're switching things up a bit. As you guys know, I'm primarily a painter, muralist, and all around swell fellow. This week, I wanna dive back into something I haven't done since college, and that's work 3D. While I was recently spending some time at Goodwill, I came across this super awesome pack of Sculpey clay. Every color I could ever wanna mess with, that inspired me to want to do this video and I went out and even bought some stone effect modeling clay by Das Stone. None of these people are sponsoring me but hey maybe they will. So if you guys don't know I have done some sculpture in the past and if you're in the Pittsburgh area you can see a four foot concrete sculpture that I actually had the pleasure of installing in front of the free store on Braddock Avenue in Braddock. What a perfect segue into what I actually want to sculpt this week. I want to try and make a tabletop replica of the Sunheart sculpture in Braddock. So let's play around with this Sculpey clay. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with it and there's tons of colors to choose from. I want to get messy with this make something fun and exciting, and then focus on the Sun the Heart, Heart Sculpture. sculpture. Ah, that's so nice. I don't even know where to start. I don't know what to do. Mm. I know just what to sculpt. We're gonna do a mini Zach. This is gonna be so much fun. Oh, maybe even a little Sun Heart. Let's get started. Oh. So I have a photograph of our example, as you can see. Tiny Zach. I think I'm even gonna try and give him the clock and the brush. I will mention, I did watch a Jazza YouTube video on sculpting, so I feel a little bit more confident after watching him go over his process. And shout out Jazza, he has no idea who I am, but I love watching all your stuff. So the thing that Jazza mentioned that we need to get started is actually aluminum foil. He mentions to use this to start building the form of the sculpture you're hoping to create. I don't think that's too bad of a shape. And try and build the body. It's not too bad either. I'm even gonna try and line it up to the size of the screen. That's not too bad. Almost forgot about the wire. This is gonna help us build the shapes out. <laughs> Check it out so far. You can see where it's going. Legs, 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 legs. Absolutely terrifying. So now that we have our aluminum foil man all finished, is to start wrapping it in clay. Let's call this the little skeleton outline. So this clay was super easy to wrap around the aluminum foil. They kind of just adhered to each other naturally. One thing I wanna mention as a quick tip is the clay actually got easier to use the more I like manipulated it with my hands. So taking some extra time to just soften it up really made a difference. I didn't do that at the beginning, but towards the end of sculpting, I figured that out and it really did change the game. As you can see, after about a half an hour of stretching the clay around the aluminum foil, we have a great little base shape for our character. This stuff is pretty user friendly, but I'm using white, so the colors from the other clay is transferring onto the white. I've never used this stuff before. I don't know what's gonna happen once it dries or if it hardens or, or what, if I can manipulate it more. I'm thinking of even possibly painting over top of it again once I'm done, but not too bad for a first time sculpting uh, Tiny Zach. He's looking good so far. I'm gonna keep detailing him up and uh, see if we can and smooth out some of the issues on it. Another tip for y'all is uh, have a sponge and some water nearby because uh, you could use the sponge to smooth the surface. It, it made it a lot easier to soften things up and uh, make some corrections. Check this beauty out. I especially love the little drop of paint on the brush. Not gonna lie, cutting out that sun heart was way more challenging than I expected. Initially, I was just gonna hand paint it on once the clay was finished, but I'm glad that I pushed myself to try and cut it out. This was the tiniest sun heart I ever cut, and I think it makes the sculpture look so much more authentic and even gives it a little bit more of a professional look. I'm very happy with how it's all coming together so far. So with the Sculpey clay, the instructions say that once we have our sculpture finished, we need to bake it at 275 degrees. So I wanna go ahead and make a base for Mini Zach to sit on or stand on. So I wanna go ahead and mess with that for a second. Then we will bake this and see how the end result comes out. Ta-da! 
We're gonna see what happens if I put this thing in the oven. I don't know what the heck's gonna happen to the wood or any of the metal on the inside, but you only live once, I guess, right? All right, let's preheat this bad boy to 75. Boom. While the oven's preheating, I thought this would be a perfect time to let you guys know that we have tons of awesome merch at ZacharyRotorArt.com. Hats, hoodies, backpacks, fannies, everything you could want to spread a little love in your community. And I'm excited to announce that we're doing a t-shirt sale and art raffle giveaway. Head on over to ZacharyRotorArt.com, check out the St. Paddy's Day Sun Clover shirt, and anyone that purchases a shirt is automatically entered to win a custom circle painting by yours truly. We're announcing the winner on St. Paddy's Day, so get a shirt ASAP. Now let's put this sculpture in the oven. All right, moment of truth. Oh, it fogged up the camera. Oh. Uh, Did I burn the house down? Oh, it didn't burn. Oh yeah, boy. I'll let it cool off, and then we'll head back to the studio. I'm excited. Okay, not gonna lie. This turned out better than I ever could have imagined. And it's just the warm-up sculpture. So I have to step my game up for part two of this video. Instead of doing one miniature sun heart sculpture, let's try and get three identical sun heart sculptures done by the end of this video. Let's get some quick close-ups of this little guy though. Tiny Zach! Tiny Zach is finished and I am so happy. On to part two of this video. As I mentioned, we're making three identical sun heart sculptures to match my sculpture in front of the free store. So let's get down to business. Now that we've got our workstation reorganized, we're ready to go. This DOS stone effect modeling clay is something I've been really excited to use. It says it's air hardening and it seems like it's user friendly, but after seeing how well Tiny Zach turned out, I'm confident that these three sun heart sculptures are gonna be easy peasy. So you see I have a piece of paper here. The reason for that is that I wanna make three identical images. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is doodle out how the sun heart sculpture is gonna look and then cut this out and use it as a template. And I want it to be just as playful as the actual sculpture. So as you can see, we got a very basic shape. It doesn't look too great, but it's just enough for us to transfer three-dimensionally. Now that we've got our stencil drawn up, it's time to cut it out using an X-Acto knife, and then we'll get to work with some clay, baby. Just as I said before, guys, I am forever cutting out Sun Heart stencils. It's all in the name of love, baby, and I love doing it, so. Boom shakalaka. I think this is gonna be a nice little tabletop keepsake to remind everyone to spread a little love. Now that that's finished, let's crack this clay open and get to work. I think we're gonna end up using all of this. Time to roll the sleeves up. <laughs> Ooh, it's slimy. Ugh, it feels so weird. Ooh. Okay, now what I want to do is go ahead and split it up into threes. It feels so weird. One, One potato, two potato, two potato, four. I think that worked out pretty fantastically. <laughs> I needed something to roll it out with. And what better than some iron lac spray paint? They're for more than just painting walls. Oh, that's not too bad actually. No, it's not bad at all. This is nerve wracking. The smell is something I could do without as well. It has like a plasticky type of smell. Take the paper off. <laughs> Saved it. Not terrible. This thing is already starting to get hard actually. <laughs> that's what she said. All right, I'm just about finished smoothing everything out. It looks pretty good. I'm worried about how strong it's gonna be once it hardens because it's really thin. Let's get this out of here. All right, we got that one set aside to dry. We got two more to go. It's time to speed things up. <laughs> We've got our third sun heart sculpture carved out. Let's let all three dry. And in the meantime, we'll start painting the bases. Twenty-four hours later. Check them out. 
After more than 24 hours, these things are finally dry enough to add some paint to them. So let's get started. Of course, when you paint anything, you wanna start with a white primer base. I did two coats of white primer and then another coat of white paint on top before I added the red. So I'm not gonna lie, these are looking way better than I thought, but after adding the white and adding the red, I think they look pretty good. Once that black's on there, they're gonna be perfect. That being said, we have one more color to go. Let's get this finished. The black really brings everything together. The hearts are finished and drying. The final step is prepping the base for each sun heart. Woo! It's simple as that. Let's go check on those sun hearts and see if they're ready to add to the base. Perfect, ready to go. Mm. They look phenomenal, guys. I am blown away. These little beauties turned out better than I ever could have expected. I really pushed myself on this one, and now we have three beautiful sun heart sculpture miniatures. This video was more fun than I expected. I highly recommend the DOS modeling clay and the Sculpey air hardening clay as well. Both were pretty user friendly. This was my first time experimenting with either one, and as you can see, success. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you had fun, if you enjoyed yourself, and if you learned a thing or two, please like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with all the fun happening at Studio Time. And until next time, keep creating art. Bye guys. Now, I know y'all didn't think this video was over yet. Before you guys go, I want to thank you for sticking around this long. Please subscribe to the channel. Your support means the world. And one final thing, every single song in this week's episode was produced, mixed, mastered, and recorded by my homie, Louis Castle. So if you guys like the music throughout this video, definitely check them out on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, OnlyFans, Twitter, Tinder, wherever you can find Louis Castle. I promise you he's there and he's rocking and a rolling. So check out his stuff and bro, Thanks for the music.